Hi there, my name's Nate, and I want to tell you something you already know, but you may not know you know. I also want to thank you for saving my life. I should have said something a long time ago, but honestly, I was scared too, really scared, like the world is going to end if I say something scared. But now that I sound like a crazy person, here I am. You see, part of this video is about pain. I know, I know, ah, negativity, where's the positive vibes? We'll get there, don't worry, but first, I want to talk about my friend, Pain. I know Pain well, and turns out, we get along, he's a good guy. He has a twin though, Suffering, that looks exactly like him, but they aren't alike at all. I know the twin well too. I know the deepest, darkest, soul-wrenching suffering, the suffering that crushes dreams and obliterates hearts. But I hid that too, just like you. Because we both know it's okay to hurt, but it's not okay to hurt that much. At 18, I was diagnosed with severe Crohn's disease. It's a debilitating, life-ruining illness that according to every doctor I talked to, was impossible to cure. Before my diagnosis, I was an athlete, an entrepreneur, and a young actor uh, with big dreams to crush it in life, and then bam, it all just stopped. I tried and tried and tried for years to keep my dreams alive, to believe that maybe I could still make it happen against all the odds. But one failure turned into two, into five, into a dozen, into a hundred, and every day I woke up there was this this cliff in front of me and every day I'd set out to climb and make progress for a day, a week, a month, but eventually Crohn's would rear its monstrous head and I'd be crushed back into sickness. And every time I fell, I heard the numerous doctors and even well-meaning friends in my ears telling me, Nate, what are you doing, man? Just, just accept the illness. Stop fighting, resign to the fact that this is just your life now. So eventually, I started to believe them. I added depression with a strong dose of anxiety to my list of problems. Then I got what I like to call thunderbolted. God, the universe, energy, whatever you want to call it, gave me one thought. That if I could somehow use this crushing, seemingly endless suffering to help you, to help even one person, it would be worth it. And that's where you come in. You rekindled my, my motivation, my drive, my passion, my meaning in life. So then and there I decided to find a better way to live or, or die trying. I know that sounds extreme, but I was done. There was no other option. Dozens of medical professionals had told me there was no hope. I was in my early 20s and I felt 95. I could barely get out of bed most days. I mean, people talk about seeing this light at the end of the tunnel. I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face. But I had finally found a deeper meaning, a reason to press on besides for just myself. So now, here I am, on the other side, and I want to tell you the truth. The truth that we cover up, we laugh away, because it's okay to make jokes about the pain, the suffering that hurts too much, but it isn't okay to actually show it. The truth is, your pain is real. The anxiety, the depression, the, the trauma, the breakup, the loss, the illness, the pain, it's all real, and it hurts. It hurts like hell, and 99% of the world is dealing with the same pain, laughing about it the same way you do, drinking it under the table the same way we do, ignoring it the same way we do, and uh, being positive the same way we do. The truth is, it also shouldn't be normal to have anxiety. It shouldn't be normal to be depressed. It shouldn't be normal to be tired all the time. It shouldn't be normal to be on nine different medications. It shouldn't be normal to hate our jobs, to muddle our way through our lives, to give up on our dreams, to date someone just to be comfortable, to live for the weekend. No, that's not normal. We just think it is. So I sat at a crossroads. If this was truly it, if this life of suffering was all there was, I might as well give up. I couldn't straddle the fence anymore. Either I had to let go of life or grab hold of it so fiercely that even though my body might be ruined, my heart would be so vibrantly alive it would shine through my broken body and maybe, just maybe one day I could do the impossible. 
So I tried. I gave up and tried again and gave up again and again and again. And then the impossible became real. Which brings us to the part you already know, but may not know you know. The choice. The choice is not affiliated with any religion or way of belief, and it's not even something I have to convince you of, because you already know. No one can take it away from you unless you give it to them. It's the most basic human freedom. The choice is the power to choose your thoughts, the power to choose how you view circumstance, the ability to change perspective, to guide emotions. This is at the core of almost every great religion. It saturates coaching, motivation, teaching, counseling. Once you notice it, you'll see it everywhere, but until then, you won't see it at all. Now, I know, you're probably thinking, this guy is so full of crap, I've heard this all before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pish, posh, what's the real secret? I get it. I said exactly the same thing. When I was first diagnosed, I was told that it could never be cured, that I'd be in this miserable hellhole the rest of my life. And I believed them. I cursed my shitty luck, yelled at God, blamed everything on the illness, my failures, my lack of relationship, my lack of money, fitness, health, bad attitude, all of it. And honestly, I had every reason in the world. No one blamed me for making excuses. Some people cry about their coffee being cold. I had a serious problem, a potentially life-ruining illness, and I focused all my energy on this pain in my life. I thought about it constantly. It ran my life completely. And that, that is the difference between pain and suffering. This is the choice you have. Can you make the pain go away? Maybe, some of it, over the long term. But we're human, we live here on planet Earth. Life can be painful sometimes. The question is, what can you do right now? I realized it doesn't matter how valid my line of reasoning was for my life sucking, for living and suffering. The fact was it sucked and either I could do something about it or blame everything and do nothing. This is the shift. The pain didn't evaporate, my illness didn't disappear, but I had a choice. Either spend all my time focusing on the problem, drowning myself in more and more suffering until I couldn't breathe, or realize the pain was there, accept it, and shift my focus to creating a better life. That was when my disease took on new meaning. I became determined to get better, not just for me, but for all the rest of you as well. It became my mission to live life to the absolute fullest, no matter what. I took back my control of the power to choose. I had given all control of my life to Crohn's disease, my mind, my thoughts, my emotions, my actions, without even realizing it. Now I want to be honest here. The year after I made this shift in perspective, life sucked. It was awful. Nothing seemed to change. The year after that, life still sucked. The year after that, I felt like I was still in the exact same place, caught in an endless circle. But I was even more determined. I would not give up. I would never give in, not ever again. There was no plan B, there was no backup. This was it. Then, three years after I changed my perspective, life started to get just a little bit better. It was such a small shift I barely noticed. And now here I am, living the impossible. Intensely, passionately sold out to the idea that anyone, anyone can achieve their dreams. That if a plain guy like me can beat a chronically debilitating illness, intense anxiety, and a side plate of depression because of a simple choice, other people can live their highest life as well. To use a currently popular phrase, take back your power. Your real power, though. Not some fake dump on other people bullcrap. Real power doesn't parade itself around in other people's faces. It doesn't need to. Real power just is. And people will see it when you have it. Don't worry. They'll know. You don't have to post about it on Facebook. Don't give your power to anxiety. Don't give it to depression. Don't give your state of mind, your way of life, to some politician, lover, ex-lover, job, illness, accident, trauma. Screw that. What a waste of energy. Realize the truth, the truth that crap happens in life, the truth that it's not fake. 
You're not making it up. No, it's, it's real. It's painful. It's horrible. And it happens to everyone. But we have a choice. Life is too valuable, too precious to spend it in the control of something or, or someone else, in control of suffering. Your ability to choose is the only thing you have absolute control of. So, use it. Did you know that you can be in massive pain and in total happiness at the same time? Yep, you can. It's not easy. It will absolutely not happen overnight. There is no quick fix, but there is a way out. And even if the odds are 99 to 1, even if you're buried so far down that you can't see your own hand in front of your face, isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth it to decide that you're done? You're done halfway living, done pretending, done blaming. To decide that you're living, fully living, no matter what it takes. To decide that you're done with kind of almost okay, normal. To never give up, not ever again. Set yourself free. It's not popular, it's not normal. But the truth is, normal sucks. It's absolute garbaggio. So let's change normal. If you're still with me, maybe you're thinking, man, that sounds great, but I don't know. Or, okay, I want to, but how do I do this elusive thing called decide? Here's what you do. Simple, really. When this video is over, sit down and write down what will happen if you don't change, if you don't make this decision. It's most likely not going to be a fun or pretty list. Then on the other side, Write down what your life could look like and don't shortchange yourself. All those dreams you've been squashing, let them come out, no matter how big or grandiose. Write down how you want to feel, behave, live, interact. Look at the list. Which life do you actually want to have? The trouble is, we think we can just get by. That if things aren't that bad, it'll be okay. You know that's not true. Stop lying to yourself. I thought we I thought we talked about this already. Come on now. Look at the list. Pick one. If you pick the life of your dreams, congratulations, pack yourself on the back. Pick one thing that you're going to start today that will move you towards something on that list. I don't care how small it is. Pick it. Do it. Get that gym membership. Go work out for five minutes. Pick up a book and read. Clean your room. Buy a journal. Get a coach. Get out of bed. Whatever is that step for you, take it. I believe in you, I'm proud of you, and thank you.